It is a quarter to seven, and the Sri Lankan government is claiming that reaction to a UN report on the end of its war with the Tamil Tigers is hampering reconciliation on the island. The report accuses the government, and indeed the Tamil Tigers, of treatment that could amount to war crimes at the end of the long conflict in 2009. Uh, we're joined in the studio by the advisor to the Sri Lankan president on reconciliation, uh, Professor Rajiva um, Wijasin. Uh, MP, but we can first go to our correspondent Charles Haviland, who's in Colombo. Just remind us of the background to this, Charles. Well, the report that you mentioned, the panel mandated by Ban Ki moon, they basically drew on primary sources that they said they deemed trustworthy, and they came out with a list of what they said were credible allegations about, against both the government and the Tamil Tigers dating from the last months of the war. You may recall that was about, about two years ago. And that means that they felt there was a reasonable basis to believe that these acts occurred. And I will just summarize them briefly for you. They said that there were credible allegations that the Sri Lankan government killed many civilians through widespread shelling, shelled hospitals and humanitarian objects, deprived the trapped civilians of sufficient humanitarian aid, and committed rights violations outside the conflict zone. And I'll just give you one example. They say there is credible allegations that there were summary executions of some people alleged to have been tigers. But of course they said there were credible allegations against the tigers as well, that the tigers used civilians as a human buffer, that they killed civilians trying to escape tiger control. Some of them shot point blank, that the tigers used military equipment near civilians, they engaged in forced recruitment of children and forced labour, and they killed civilians through suicide attacks, says Ban Ki-moon's panel. Right. Uh, well, let me bring Professor uh, Wijasinha in, in the studio here. What the UN essentially said was that the end of this war uh, was a bloody affair, that uh, what it regards as unacceptable things were done on both sides. In trying to produce reconciliation, isn't it important that all that is on the table, that people do not try to hide the fact that it was a terrible end to this conflict? Well, I don't think anyone said in the fact that it was a terrible end. I think the main problem that we have is that when we're trying to do our best for the Tamil civilians in Sri Lanka in terms of uh, restoring livelihoods, returning them back home, uh, this sudden spate of allegations which uh, seem to build on each other, as it were, uh, there's, to use their phrase, there's very credible evidence that uh, many of the things that Charles mentioned come uh, from the same evidence as the Channel 4 stuff. Uh, there's also very credible evidence now that we've been through it that there was a particular UN spokesman who uh, s in several occasions made um, erroneous statements which had then to be corrected by his bosses who cites a particular South African who used to work for Jonas Savimbi in Angola and he seems to have spent much of his time in Sri Lanka setting up what is termed a network of observers, i.e. informers, who have informed this panel. Now, of the four things that Charles mentioned, I think there's fairly clear evidence from what we covered that the civilian deaths largely arose from deliberate sighting of weapons, heavy weapons, by the Tigers amid civilians, that's admitted. And I suppose this raises a very fundamental question, which you guys have answered definitely mm. in the affirmative, that if you've got heavy weaponry used against you, what do you do? You well, have to have take maximum care not to injure civilians, but of course you can't avoid it altogether if you're going to save your own forces. But surely the point is that if <coughs> it is a genuine reconciliation after a very long and very bloody battle, it is important that you know, the curtain isn't drawn over these things, that people established exactly what happened. You know, the Times' uh, estimate was, for example, that 20,000 people died in the closing stages of the conflict. Um, by the end of April in the year in question, the UN says 7,000 had died. Now, we can argue about wh whether those figures are absolutely accurate or not, and probably there is no way of ever establishing that they are precise, but... There is no point in trying to pretend that it was anything other than awful and that some things happened which shouldn't have happened on both sides and they need to be put into the process. Well, I think that's why we have a lesson learned in Reconciliation Commission. But what we find really very irritating is that, and I'm sorry to say this, it was largely David Miliband who from 2009 
kept agitating for a war crimes tribunal. He admitted to the Americans, it's in WikiLeaks, that he was doing this for electoral considerations. And we do find it extremely depressing that in order to win votes in England, uh, British politicians were playing with the lives of people in Sri Lanka. When he came to Colombo, um, the BBC asked him whether, like every other international commenter, commentator, he would want the Tigers to surrender, and he dodged the question. You may remember that. Mm. Now, essentially, what we find is that this recent spate of allegations seems to be driven by the diaspora. Again, WikiLeaks revealed the American ambassador wrote to the Americans saying the people in Sri Lanka, the Tamils whom we have to work with and want to make full members of our society, are not interested in this. You see, the really sad thing is that there seems to be in the West an assumption that you need to go into all these in a recriminatory, retributive fashion, which to me is hopelessly old-fashioned. You know, it's a bit like what's happening in Britain now, you know, poor Kenneth Clark tries to sort of introduce sanity into sentencing policy and people say, no, 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 hang them. I mean, we are beyond that. We have to look for the benefits of our people in Sri Lanka. They are not interested in witch hunts. I fully agree that we need to lay things on the table, but not in this accusatory fashion that takes advantage of tremendous falsehoods. I think when you have okay. situations like Channel 4, which produce... Uh, videos in which uh, very strange things happen, in doctored right. videos, which they have now admitted, to use that to persecute a government that is doing its best for healing and reconciliation seems to me vicious. Uh, Rajiva Wijasinha, thank you very much. Thank you.